Tubies! Warboss tear up in this mud and today I'm going to show you a Warboss painting tutorial on how to paint your Talos paint engine. Now the thing with these guys are that you can give them an insane amount of customization. So the options I went for were the chain flails and the twin link liquefier gun but really the techniques that I'm going to teach you as I think I'm going to say in the next clip you can use for for any of the options you go for. This is just to show you the basic techniques on how to do the armor plates, how to do the skin, how to do the different metal pieces and the vials and everything. But I hope you enjoy it. This is going to be a competition entry for Girl Painting 7000 subscriber competition. And hopefully, if you have your own Talos paint engine, what I thought was great about this was that it was just a blown up model of blown up version of all the grotesques and racks I've been painting so it was fun to be able to work on a larger surface area for a lot of these pieces and I'd be really interested to see how your models turn out if you have a Talos or a Kronos paint engine and would like to leave a video response or comments or or anything let me know how yours turned out then that would be awesome I'm always interested to hear how other players models turned out and if any of these techniques worked for you let me know that as well leave it in the comments don't forget to like comment subscribe favorite all that good stuff and let's get on with the painting war boss tutorial so after building up my talos paint engine as you can see i've got a twin linked liquefier gun which i hear is pretty cool and just um when i was Looking at what all the different options do, I think this is going to be a lot more fun one to play crazy flamer weapon type rather than uh, an extra close combat weapon. But I do have chain flails here so I can re-roll my <coughs> number of random attacks. Put some spiky racks on his back and gave him the haywire blaster which seems like it'll be a fun way to stun at least some tanks from a good distance away. Yeah, so it looks like this guy is going to be just tromping across the floating, I guess, across the field rather than rather than going taking the webway portal, which is pretty pretty cool, I think, and uh, pretty fluffy. To see, see this guy floating across the field, give my opponent something to shoot at while the rest of my guys zip in close. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray primer this guy, and I think I'm going to go with a black primer. Now, this war boss tutorial is going to be how to paint him in a traditional color scheme, the traditional black Eldar color scheme. It'll be easier to sell him off later if I can find a potential buyer and if I decide to sell off my dark Eldar. But I thought a fun way to go would be to give them a kind of circusy theme, make this guy like a circus elephant, like big and colorful and bright with lots of creepy carnival looking paint paint color scheme, uh, <laughs> a paint scheme, lots of cr crazy colors, but um, for this I'm just going to go traditional route, so maybe one day I'll, I'll do one all by itself and show it, show that off to you and just like showcase it as a finished product, but for today's War Boss tutorial we're going to spray this guy with black, black spray. So I will come back when that's done and then we will get into the painting. All right, everybody, now that I've got my Talos Pain engine suitably primered up with the undercoat of black matte spray, we're going to do the skin. And as with all other Dark Eldar abominations and undead things, we've started this month of spook spooky Toberfest. We're going to use Deneb Stone Citadel Foundation Paint. And I can tell just by looking at the model here that this is going to be going on the arms and on the underlying skin underneath the carapace. And I'm already thinking that it's going to be great to paint up all this bruised and purpley and splotchy and bloody. I'm also thinking that the carapace here on the tail, these vertebral spinal columns. I'm thinking that we should bring the denim stone into that too because 
Here's some carapace armor to co uh, cover and protect that. Here's some down here. So, so just like Tyranids, I'm thinking of the dark carapace shell covering contrasting with the lighter skin tone that's going to be underneath. So we're going to use Deneb stone on the any any piece that would be skin or bone of the creature inside and underneath all the carapace. And don't worry about covering things like these metal outlets or or other things because we're going to be repainting those in just a little while. Okay? So, if you have if at any time during this war boss tutorial you have other armaments besides the liquefier gun or the chain flails, don't worry because you can carry over the the techniques that I'm teaching for this model to just about every other option with just a little bit of finagling and and alteration. Okay, I'll see you back when the flesh is done. So after painting the Deneb stone all in the skin and the bone areas, I took some bolt gun metal and the first thing I did was I painted the spine here behind the tail and then I saw on the GW Workshop uh, Games Workshop website that they actually paint these little brackets beside each little spiny protrusion in bolt gun metal. So I decided to get to work on all the metal and I thought it'd just be easiest to get it out of the way now before I put the washes on. So then I hit all of the areas on the model that I thought would be metal, like all the spikes, bolt gun metal the barrels of the haywire blaster painted all the gold areas I painted tin bits first and then I painted shiny gold because shiny gold is really hard to paint straight onto black but tin bits is a great medium color you can also paint a light brown such as Camry brown so foundation base but I decided to go with tin bits because it's already a metallic color so I painted tin bits and then I painted shining gold over all of the metal, all of the gold parts. For all the silver parts, I painted bolt gun metal. So we're talking about the spikes, and the carapace. We're talking about the the blades. We're talking about the metal parts of the vestigial arms, the chains underneath the carapace holding the skin, pulling the skin up through these hooks, the rims of the body rims of each arm, the little metal sockets inside the, the creature's body, and the brackets, or the, the end pieces of all the little vials and whatnot. So on the chest, he's got a little chest implant, some more sockets, and gold rim on the face mask. For the chain flails, the um, chain flails inside these little wind-up things. I painted silver. Chain flails itself, I painted silver. And these, I don't know what you'd call them, the, the, the coils, the edges I painted in gold. For the liquefier gun, you've got a lot of metal here. You've got all the brackets that are holding the wires together. And then you've got to paint metal all the metallic parts of the arm, or of the gun. And then on the actual casing, just the, the little sockets and the ends of the tubes. Okay. So it's okay if it's not exactly perfectly clean. Like don't don't kill yourself trying to get it perfectly the way you want it to be because it's gonna the washes are gonna cover up a lot of that and fix a lot of that. And let's do that now. Let's hit the skin with our favorite Ogren Flesh Wash, which is going to add a lot of great colors and add the shading and the depth that looks like it's so obviously lacking now. Let's see if I can find some. It's Ogren Flesh. Here we go. Citadel Washes, Ogren Flesh. Add it to all of the Deneb Stone areas, and don't worry about it filling in to like the metal brackets and all these other areas. It's going to naturally do that anyway, and that's what we want, but we want the met metallic parts to be in there already. I think it'll make a greater, 
a greater transition and give you less work to do later on. Okay, Ogre and Flesh on all the Deneb stone. Once the Ogre and Flesh dries, I did two steps here which I'm going to talk you through. The first one is I took Dark Angel's Green and I mixed it with Chaos Black. And I painted that, it was a 50-50 mix, I painted that onto all of the carapace plates because I want this guy to match the rest of my Dark Angels, the Cabal of the Black Heart as Drabel Vex Force. Um, but if you don't want to make your Talos Pain Engine match and you'd rather have it be faithful to the Hemonculus Covens, then you just keep the carapace black and you highlight with Codex Grey instead. This is just more of a fluff choice, but um, those are your options. Then I highlighted these carapace plates once the color went from black to this dark, super dark green. I highlighted them with P3 Paints Troll Blood Base Paint Formula, which looks like this. If you don't have access to Formula P3, another good option is Hawk Turquoise with a little bit of Snut Green mixed in to dull down the outright blue color and that'll give you a, a pretty similar color to that. But what I did was I painted the carapace underneath the tail as well as the under carapace parts for each of the two we weapons. So down in there, but not the not the over part. That I'm going to keep true to the Hemonculus Covens, and I'm going to paint these two pieces as well as the uh, I guess the little his little floaty seat. I'm going to highlight those with Codex Gray. If you want to go pure Hemonculus Coven, then highlight all of the plates with Codex Gray as well as the face mask. So while I do that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Bad Up Black and wash over all of the metal as well as all of the carapace plates. So the Bad Up Black is going to get into all the seams and it's going to cover up all the little mistakes that you might have made for your highlighting of the carapace plates and it's going to end up looking really really nice. So again we're highlighting the, the armor plates and we are washing Bad Up Black into, onto all the metal and all of the armor plates. So I will see you when I have finished with that. For this next step, you're going to need Snot Green, Space Wolf's Gray, and your Troll Blood base, or your mixture of Hawk Turquoise and Snot Green. And what you're going to do is you're going to add a little bit of Space Wolf's Gray to what we use to highlight the armor plates in just a couple steps ago. And you're going to apply it to the tips, all the sharp tips of all of the carapace plates. And that brings, that's going to bring the color back up and give it a very ghostly, ethereal quality. And as you can see, it blends into the previous highlight color, which was dulled down because of the Bad Dab Black Wash. And you're going to add in Snot Green to all of the vials and all of the tubes going into the pain engine's body. And this is a great part or a great time when you can show the effects of gravity by having different levels of drugs in the injectors, having them being at the bottom half of the vials rather than at the top. Oh, that one I gotta change kind of like backwards. So having the liquid at the bottom depending on kind of like this depending on what gravity is doing to the fluid inside the vials is a great way to test out your artistic talents. Okay so go ahead and do all of that now. Again that's Stop green and a little bit of Space Wolves Gray added to our previous highlighting mixture. And then, when you're done with that, we're going to get to the bruising of the skin. And that should be just about our final step in this painting tutorial. Okay, so I decided to add a little bit of Scorpion Green to all the vials. Just to make the greens pop a little bit more. And then after I was done, I watered down 
a lot of water down Dark Angel Green, a lot of water to make it <clears throat> more of a glaze and then I washed the glaze over all of the vials and I think that helped a lot so from a from more of a distance you can see the greens a lot more popping out from the rest of the model okay and then I went to work on the bruising of the skin which is really my favorite part with with any of these Dark Angels or Dark Eldar, I'm sorry, Dark Eldar models so I use Baal Red and Leviathan Purple and starting with the Baal Red I went in places and I just was you know really really random and splotchy and then I went over those places again with the purple wash and I hit a couple more places because the purple is a little bit more of an interesting color to show where the different areas of bruising would be. So especially anywhere under or around where sockets or where robotics or bionics meet the skin, that's kind of where you want to hit. And yeah, it, it works really great on these large surface areas too, like by the biceps, just to show how d diseased and, and tender those areas are by the areas where the machines are injecting right into the skin. And if you want, like this side of the chest looks a little bit too purple to me. I'm going to go back over a little bit with the denim stone, a little bit of a watered down, thinned down denim stone and um, you can cover up any mistakes you make. So the best thing about painting is that, you know, never get discouraged if something doesn't turn out the way you want it. You can just go over it again and fix the problem. And that is about it for this miniature. I hope you've enjoyed this War Boss painting tutorial and I will see you in the next video for Spooky Toberfest. Thanks for watching.